So good to be back before you on this uh, enrichment studies Wednesday evening. We're going to get started right away. Uh, we're talking about some of the things that you don't do. We want to complete and finalize this uh, this particular series, and so we want to just uh, talk about a few more other things. And we're talking about our children as far as discipline and the things that we need to do. We're kind of past the part of corporate punishment now. And so we're just laying uh, a few more things down so that you can uh, put them in your memory <coughs> and, and try some of these things. So one of the things we want to talk about is we want to make sure that when you're talking to your kids and, and they've done something wrong, uh, we want to make sure that you don't make idle threats when they do something wrong and you promise that you're going to chastise them in a certain way, discipline them in a certain way, then you have to make sure that you make good on your promise. So don't make idle threats. If you make a promise, deliver on that promise, no matter the sacrifice. Sometimes <clears throat> we things come up, things pop up, or we have schedules that come in and we uh, just forget about what we told our kids we were going to do. And the, and the promise work both ways. If they do something good and you promise to uh, reward them, then reward them. If they do something uh, that's, that needs disciplinary action, make sure you reward that too. You make sure that you take care of that. Because when they <clears throat> get away with things, they feel like they can get away and they feel like that's going to be the norm. And so now when you allow them to get away with things and you don't chastise them according to your promise, uh, you now you're negating the training. Okay, so you're not you're no longer training them. So remember the training. You got to always remember the process. You got to remember that it don't matter if it, you know if it's just a sacrifice. I don't really feel like doing this right now. You know this is gonna mess up my emotions. This is gonna destroy my day. All of that. But you know you got to think in terms of that. Uh, when we have kids, we got to understand that there are so many things that we have to do that's going to be uncomfortable. We're not ready to do. We don't feel like doing. It's a sacrifice to do. Um, you know, we want to let it slide. See, it's easy not to have conflict. It's easy not to correct. It's easy to not train. But you always have to remember, if we don't do those things now while they're young, uh, it's going to be trouble down the road. You're going to have problems. You know, everybody that your child come in contact with, that's going to be some kind of problem, some kind of issues. We like to tell parents, look, try to uh, learn how to discipline your kids and train them at home when they're coming up. Because one day they're going to have to go to school. And when they go to school, they're going to have to be able to sit still. They're going to have to be able to listen. They can't just talk and play and run around and do what they want to do. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a stack of referral referrals like that at the office and, and and every every day they're going to be calling you to come get your child from school and so that has to start at home so we immediately know that when uh kids have not been disciplined at home because of the way they act at school and we had the privilege one year or a few years of of doing testing for a certain school uh for the kids to get in and it was so amazing uh the lack thereof when it came to when it when it comes to parents training their kids. Some of the kids didn't even know their real name. We asked them what their name was, and they told us their nickname. We know that, that can't be the child name. So I had to leave the testing site, go to where the parent was, and ask them, uh, excuse me, what is your child's real name? Goes back to training. You know, you can't name your, I mean, you can, I mean, I understand you have nicknames. Don't get me wrong. I understand nicknames. And my mom was from old school. She never called us by anything but our real name. So you can't go to school and say, uh, uh, you know, his name is his nickname is Neon or his nickname is Puke. You know, what's your name? My name Puke. No, 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 no. What's your real name, baby? And they have to know. And not only do they have to know the name, then they have to know how to spell it. And, and it was amazing that these kids were getting into kindergarten and the things that they needed to know. They need to be able to identify colors and shapes and numbers and be able to add and be able to understand some of the reading. I mean, it was it was on point. And so we were just and, and I thank God for that experience. I think we did it about two or three years. And, uh, you know, you know, we had some kids come in there. They were dressed to kill. I mean, they had they were had matching shirts and matching shoes and and just dressed, uh, dressed apart. And you look oh, just so nice and clean and mannerable, but didn't know anything. Let me move on before I get stuck there. And so another thing, too, we have to be consistent, okay? A rule is a rule. 
And we have to, when we have rules and regulations, should I say rules when it comes to our kids, we got to make sure we enforce those rules consistently. Now, you got to make sure that you have, you don't just have a bunch of rules and, 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 and it's just so many the child can't remember, you can't remember, so on and so forth. Have a set amount of rules, a few rules that there are no gray areas. It's, it's black and white, okay? This is the time that we go to bed. This is the time that you take a bath. This is how you treat uh, one another. This is how you act in the house. You know, we don't, you know, it's amazing. I could not whistle in the house. <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, you couldn't wear your shirt tail out. You know, until this day, I have problems. Sometimes my, my son be like, Dad, you at home. You know, there's so certain things that were absolute. So you have to have some absolutes because training means this is what we do all the time, every time, over and over and over again. Okay, and then when we come to when it talks about spanking, when do you spank? Uh, or should I say whenever you do spank, make it count. So whenever you have to give corporate punishment, make sure you make it count. All right, make it count. You know, um, look for true repentance. Then forgive and drop the offense. Look for true repentance. In other words, uh, the reason why you are spanking is because you're trying to correct. Okay, we've gone past the part of listening and following instructions. We've gone past the part of we told you this over and over again. We've gone past the part that you know this is a dire offense, and we've already talked about this. Is, you absolutely don't fight, period. You don't, you don't hit people. You absolutely don't talk back to the teacher. You absolutely don't run out in the street. You absolutely uh, don't get in the car and crank it up. You ain't but two years old. Don't do that. Okay, those are absolute. And so when hap what happens is you have to make sure that you correct that. And sometimes you have to correct that by corporate punishment. And then make sure that they, they understand what they did wrong. Um, then you forgive them for it. Make sure you forgive them for it. And then guess what you do? You move on. You don't hold it against them. You don't keep reminding them. You move on. All right? We do, we do like God does us. When we sin, we ask for repentance or we ask for forgiveness, we repent. We ask for forgiveness. He forgives us, and guess what happens? We move, move, we move on, and he forgets about it. All right? Don't compare children openly. You know, we tell, you know, you have two or three kids, you know, why don't you act like such and such and such? Why don't you act like, you know, I, I, you know when I was growing up, I had, um, and this wasn't told to me, but I just know how, what kind of pressure I was under. My parents didn't compare us, but my brother was three and a half years older than I was. He was talented. He was smart. Um, you know, he was just, he was well known and so on and so forth. And so I was quiet and I was in reserve because I was comparing myself to him. You know, my thing was, I'll never be like him. I'll never be that talented. I'll never be that known. Uh, I'll never be such and such and such. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure. Now we understand that our children, each child is different. We understand that. But you don't want to openly compare the kids to each other or, or tell this child, why don't you be like your sister? Why don't you be like your brother? Why can't you behave? Or why can't you get your, why can't you bring home A's like your sister? Why can't you bring home B? Why can't you uh, hit home runs like your brother? Why you can't run the football? You know, sometimes we say things, and that's why we have to be careful. You have to be careful, and we have to think as parents, we have to think before we say things to our children. And you know what? All it's going to do is help us uh, have a better life. You know, we need to think before, because the Bible says, be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to rap. So in our everyday life, we need to be able to see things, hear things, and, and have things come against us to where we are so slow to respond. Guess where you get the training to do that at? At home with your kids. You know, don't be quick to be flip mouth because we think sometimes we think we own our kids like like they are property. No, 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 no. They are people just like we are. They have personalities. They have feelings. You know, they remember things. They have emotions. They they have spirits. They have hearts. They live, live, they breathe. You know, they they they, you know, so so you have to understand that. That's why you have to always think about do unto others. You, you have them do to you. So you, if you were a child, how would you like an adult to talk to you? Even if you're in trouble and you have done some things that you should not have done, how would you like to be handled? How would you like to be talked to? How would you like to be disciplined? Okay? And so we have to make sure that we don't compare. Now, we're going to get into something a little bit uh, that, that follows what I just said. Don't, and this should be, this should be don't do. These are the don'ts. 
when it comes to uh, when it comes to discipline. The don'ts when it comes to discipline. I think that'll be a good topic. The don'ts when you when it comes to discipline or the do nots. Don't belittle. That means degrade, humiliate your children. Okay, because the glory of children are their fathers. That's over in Proverbs seventeen six. All right. Do not. I know they make you mad. I know they they acting like, you know, such and such, such, but don't call them that. Don't do it. Okay? Don't degrade. Don't humiliate because the Bible says the glory of children are their fathers. I love like I like what the uh the Living Bible says, an old man's grandchildren are his crown and glory. A child's glory is his father. So what does that mean? That means that a child is proud when his father or his parents have a good name and have a good reputation. And so when you have a good name, a good reputation, and you act a certain way, and you treat your children a certain way, those kids are proud to be your children. They're proud to be, that child is proud to be your child. He's so excited about you being his father because of the way you treat him and because of his reputation. And because of who he is and because he has a good name and he has a good name uh, within the kingdom of God and a good name outside. Everybody said this is a good, righteous man. The ones that don't know God or don't want God has to admit that this guy is a good guy. These parents are good people. OK. And so if you have a good name and a great name, um, then your child will look up to you. But if you call your name, your child names and you belittle the child, that's going to destroy him. And it's going to it's going to disconnect him and separate him from his heritage, uh, from his blessing, from his. uh, It's going to separate him in a way to where now his father, he don't see his father as his father. He sees his father as his enemy. He sees his parents as his enemy. And his parents are the ones who are supposed to be teaching and training him. His parents are the ones, they're going to, they're responsible uh, for him being the solid adult that he needs to be. Okay, having, having, having confidence and having value. His parents are responsible for that. So if you, if you belittle your child and you call them names and you degrade them, um, their respect for you is not there. And so you turn them, and, and, and basically, you just give them over to the world. You give them over to the enemy. You know, we sometimes parents want, want, want to know, what, what, what's wrong? You know, bring kids up to be, get prayer and say, I can't do nothing with this child. I don't know what's wrong with them. They got the devil in them, such and such and such. And, and all, you, all you've done at home the whole time is call them names and tell them what they're not and what they can't do and so on and so forth. And now you want God to work a miracle in their life. The Lord need to work a miracle in your life. Get your tongue right. Get your attitude right. Uh, help you to be the, the God person. We got to be examples before our kids because the Bible says that we are crowned, that, 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 that we are the child's glory. And, it, and, and so we're going to move on to another one. Don't nag. You shouldn't have to nag a well-trained child. If the child, nagging a child is not training. There's a difference between nagging and training. I need need the mothers to hear me now. Because, Mom, we we have more emotions going on and we have more words to say. All right? And so what, what is nagging? Let's talk about what is nagging. Nagging is irritating, distressing, harassing. Pestering, annoying, worrying, vexing. So here again, mothers, be careful because you tend to have more words to say and have a tendency to repeat the same thing over and over and over again. Your son, your daughter heard you the first time. You don't have to make a song about it. They heard you the first time. And so you have to understand, you, see, a lot of times we, we forget about us being in the place of that child. 
let me ask you a question. You go to work every day. You know your job. And sometimes you might not do your job. Sometimes you might forget some things. You might forget some procedures, so on and so forth. What if your boss came in your office or wherever it is that you work, and they told you that you didn't do such and such and such, and they stood there and told you the same thing over and over for five to ten minutes? How would you feel? How would you feel? So we got to have to understand that if we feel a certain way and we feel uncomfortable, we feel like that's unfair, then our kids feel the same way when we do them like that. You cannot, and I'm going to tell you about raising boys because I got a son, and so I know a little bit about raising boys. Boys, they, they have to go on command. You have to use few words. You use few words with them. Be direct and tell them what you need to do, maybe twice. That's all you have to do. Because if they don't get it, because they're built a certain way. And if they don't get it the second time, then you telling them over and over again and nagging them and getting on their nerve is not going to solve the problem. They're not going to change it. You know what they do? They get used to that and they turn a deaf ear. And that's why you got to holler at them for about six to seven minutes before you can get them to do anything. You don't talk to them and tell them the same thing over and over again. And they're not going to hear you until you finally you pick up a shoe and get ready to hit them in the head. And now they hear you. But that's the way you've trained them because you, you, just, you just got to say the same thing over and over again. Repeating the same thing over and over again does not help the situation. It doesn't change anything. It's not going to make them do anything sooner or, or, or better. It, it, all it does is irritate. It's annoying. And you don't, this is what you don't want to get. This is what you don't want your kids to do. You don't want your child to get used to your voice. You saying certain things all the time, certain things that you say to them, they get used to it to where they know you don't mean anything and you're not going to follow it up and you're not going to do anything. Because they're not going to do anything you tell them until you snap. So what you have to do is you have to make it plain. And then you have to launch, sometimes you have to launch a sneak attack. Tell them twice. So what you just told them is very important. So you tell them twice, and if they don't do it, you not launch a sneak attack. Run up on them and pop them about two or three times. And they'll be, oh. So the next time you tell them twice, they'll be like, okay, I, I, I need to go and do this because I don't know what's going to happen. That's training. It's teaching. But nagging does not work. So we have to remember that. Just like it doesn't work with you, it does not work with our kids. And so, uh, here again, don't keep putting them off. When, they need, when you need to talk to them, spend time with them. Don't keep putting them off. You know, put down the phone. Close down the laptop. Turn off the TV and listen to them. Okay? You know, one of my pet peeves is when I'm talking to somebody or we're communicating, and we can't communicate because you keep looking at your phone. We can't communicate because you're watching TV. What are you telling your kids? You're telling them that they're not important. That something on TV that's not worth anything is more important than they are. All right? So then they're listening. You want them to listen to you when you're serious. But so we have to make sure that we take time uh, and put them priorities. Uh, one other thing is we got to spend quality time with them. Got, got to spend quality time with our kids. Got to spend quality time. Now, I used to think that quality time is something serious, something constructive, something that's going to train and teach them. But do you understand quality time is play time with them too? Your kids like time to where you play with them. That's quality time for them. You understand that? Everything can't be serious in life. You don't have, you, the only time you have to take with them is when you're doing homework or when you're doing something that they need to do or, you know, no, 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 no. We got to be well balanced. But now here's another thing too, but don't, don't let it put your spouse into a secondary place of priority. So the kids, even though you spend time with them, you can't spend all of your time. You can't put the kids before the mom. You can't put kids before dad. Mothers, you can't put kids before dad. Dad, you can't put the kids. You can't be out there all your, all your leisure time. You out there throwing the ball or doing whatever with your son and your daughter. And your wife inside getting the getting food ready or cleaning the house or whatever, such and such and such. No. And so we have to understand that. And these things, a lot of these things we already know and some of them we do, but we need to be reminded. 
Because when you get in a routine every day, every, you know, routine is what you do the same thing pretty much every day and the same time of day. You get in a routine and, you, and, you, and, and before you know it, things that you should be doing and things that are important, they kind of squeezed out. You just kind of leave them out. Just kind of overrun them, pass by. So don't get in too much routine to where you, we, don't, we don't consciously understand and make a, comfort, a conscious effort or be intentional in doing some of these things. Always put yourself uh, in, your child's pla- uh, in your child's place. So in summing all of this up and all of this teaching we've been going over for weeks, uh, and this, uh, we've been going on, on and on and on in this series, We have to understand that we've got to train our children. We've got to love them. No, we don't want to, but we have to discipline them as as is needed. And remember this. You will have lifelong delight watching your children live out their lives as productive, godly adults. Because you spent the time when they were young. Training, teaching, coaching, inspiring, encouraging. And yes, there's going to be some ups and downs. There's going to be some conflict. But it's all worth it because that's what happens when you're developing and training and teaching. And always remember, your child is a representative of you. When people see your children, whether they're acting up or have good conduct or pleasant or integrity or character, They are a reflection of you. They are the chip off the block, off the old block. I hope this series has been a blessing to you. We're going to look to God to to, uh, inspire us as to what to begin to teach next. Um, Go back and listen to some of these uh, these tapes, these videos, and um, I'm sure that God will continue to inspire you, and he will continue to give you. He'll add to what we've already taught. So that you can have a successful and exciting life. God bless you. We'll see you next time.